a hands-on look at 40 plus new changes and features in iOS 15.4 and iPadOS 15.4. Here's what's new. Universal Control is arguably the flagship feature of this round of software releases. If you go to Settings General on iPadOS and go to AirPlay and Handoff, you'll see the cursor and keyboard beta, aka Universal Control. Now, if you're running macOS 12.3 and you go to the Display Preferences, you'll see a Universal Control button, and that's where you can find all the settings. Now, Universal Control is still technically in beta, so keep that in mind. Uh, if you want to know more about Universal Control, definitely watch our in-depth video. I go super in-depth with all the ins and outs of this feature, but the basic premise is being able to link your keyboard and mouse that you use with your Mac to your iPad or other Macs. You can either link those manually within display settings, or you can drag your cursor over to the edge. So here's the cursor for Mac OS. You're going to drag that over to the edge like this towards your iPad and then basically pop your cursor through to the other side. And when you do that, now you're controlling your iPad with your mouse and your keyboard that you use for your Mac. That is really awesome. So I can type using my, my Mac keyboard, I can use my mouse to control, launch apps, swipe through, and I can always go back to my Mac just like this. Universal Control is awesome. And in my more in-depth video with Universal Control, you can see how I have multiple Macs and iPads set up to use this feature. Now in 15.4, you also get dynamic volume controls on iPads. So here is the iPad mini, which had this feature already. You can see the volume controls at the top. If I press the right side, the, the volume goes up. I press the left side, the volume goes down, right? But watch what happens when I rotate the iPad mini. Now those buttons dynamically change. Now the top button in this orientation raises the volume up. Previously, this was the left button, which made the volume go down, but you could see the volume controls have dynamically changed based on orientation. Now this feature comes to other iPads. So here's my iPad Pro. Uh, you could see fixed position volume controls. That's a new setting within the sound preferences. And with that feature disabled, basically turning off fixed position, now I get the same sort of functionality that I had with the iPad mini. So you see volume up, the top button, volume down the bottom button. But here you can see those controls have dynamically changed thanks to iPad OS 15.4. Really cool feature. Now in iPad OS 15, you also get a keyboard brightness toggle. And you can find that under settings, control center. And then of course you wanna scroll down until you find keyboard brightness. You wanna add keyboard brightness to your control center and that way you have more fine grain control over keyboard brightness. Now, once enabled, you want to invoke the control center and there you see the keyboard brightness toggle there in the bottom right hand corner. So what happens when you tap that? Well, uh, nothing. <laughs> That's because the magic keyboard backlight doesn't turn on until you're in a dark environment. So as you can see there, the keyboard backlight comes on because it's dark in here. So you'll see that brightness toggle automatically fire up like that once the backlight comes on the Magic Keyboard. And once the backlight goes off, the toggle disables. So now with it on, you can go ahead and adjust the keyboard brightness just like this. Pretty slick, right? So it gives you that more fine grain control over your Magic Keyboard's brightness. And finally, for iPad OS, you now have a corner gestures preference panel within the notes preferences, which is interesting because this panel already exists in settings general gestures. So basically, this is just a duplicate to make it easier to access. So here you can set up the left or right corner swipe options with a quick note or with a screenshot. That left corner swipe option is brand new, by the way. And you can use that to invoke a quick note or a screenshot just like this. Now, like I said earlier, you can also access that via settings, general, and the gestures panel. And you'll find the left and right corner swipe there as well. Okay, so in celebration of the new green iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 Pro, we have some new wallpapers. So this is the new wallpaper for the iPhone 13 Pro. And here is the new wallpaper for the iPhone 13. What do you guys think? And there's a new American Siri voice. It's called voice number five. And let's go ahead and take a listen. You can hear what it sounds like. One day like. he walked into town and smelled all the food his animal friends were cooking. He asked 
his friend the rabbit for some of his famous stewed greens. Before long, and Nancy was tied to eight cook pots and feeling very pleased with himself. What are your thoughts? Let me know down below. As Apple promised, it provided a new anti-stalking warning message when setting up a new AirTag. So you can see AirTag is intended solely to track items that belong to you. Using AirTag to track people without their consent is a crime in many regions of the world. So hopefully this will dissuade people from using air tags maliciously. Now you'll also notice some changes to the me tab and the find my app item safety alerts toggle is no longer there. And instead you get two links directly to the notifications preferences in the settings app. And those are separate tracking notifications and find my notifications. So here is the find my notifications panel. And then you'll also see a tracking notifications panel. Those two things are broken out here in 15.4. Now you also get improved find my alerts. So instead of saying an unknown item is following you, you now know the exact item in this case, AirPods Pro. Now there's also lots of new emoji in 15.4, the melting face, the hand over mouth emoji, the peeking through the hands emoji, the troll, the sliding board, the bubbles, the ID, the disco ball, etc. You have the tire, the nest, uh, the salute. You have several different hand position emojis and even more. Which one is your favorite new emoji? And of course, one of the headlining features for 15.4 support for face ID with a mask. So this works much better than the Apple Watch Unlock. It also allows you to use third party apps with face ID. So this uses periocular support that basically uses the area around your eyes to identify you. Uh, and that's why it asks you to add various pairs of glasses if you wear multiple pairs of glasses. So this works really well. Be sure to check out our full video where I walk through the entire process of setting up Face ID with the mask and putting it to the test. So in 15.4, when you invoke Apple Pay, there's a new authorization screen that will wait until you authorize with Face ID or a passcode. And there's a new Apple Wallet widget in 15.4. So we just go and add that widget. You can see it's just a simple two by two, add it there. And as you can see, you get your card balance, your available balance. And if you go in and edit the widget, you can change the period of activities. You can make it a weekly, monthly, or yearly period. Now let's go ahead and turn on or turn off dark mode so you can see the widget in light mode. Now, if you're a dual SIM user previously, when you wanted to change the sending from phone number, you would have to go in and change the conversation line like this. But now when starting or resuming a conversation, you can change right from the conversation window. Now in 15.4, you get a seamless Safari status bar. There's no longer that little gap between the status bar and the full bleed page header. And you get to search Safari extensions in 15.4. So if you go to manage extensions, you now see a search bar at the top. Now rumors are stating that Apple will release a augmented reality headset sometime in the future. And it looks like there's some experimental settings for that right now, WebXR, which is basically an API for viewing augmented reality or VR content within a browser. And one thing to note in 15.4, yeah, when you experiment with these experimental settings, sometimes your browser can get really wonky, but now it's super easy to reset the experimental settings to defaults. All you need to do, simply tap this button and all your settings go back to default just like that. And iOS 15.4 stops iCloud Keychain from saving passwords without a username. And I don't know about you, but this has happened to me from time to time and it's super annoying, but 15.4 tries to address this and prompts you to add a username when saving a password. And speaking of passwords, you can now add notes to your keychain passwords. As you can see right here, you can even search for those notes as well. And now in 15.4, you can run shortcut automations without the annoying notification banner at the top. So here in 15.3, and then here you can see in 15.4, you have the notify when run toggle. This is what you normally would get whenever you run an automation, in this case by random wallpaper automation. But if I turn off notify when run, and I run that automation again, let's go ahead and give it a shot. You're gonna notice that you no longer get that annoying banner notification. Super handy. The TV app gets up next display preferences. So now you can switch between poster art, which you see there, and a still clip of an in progress show. So we go into settings, TV, up next display, you see still frame, or you can see poster art, which we already saw. I switched over to still frame. So now let's go back 
and you can see that update to a still frame from the show itself. iCloud mail preferences have now been consolidated in 15.4. So if you go to settings, iCloud, and there you'll see iCloud mail. Now, what's interesting is there's no more mail preferences down at the bottom of the iCloud settings. That's all been placed directly into the iCloud mail preferences, as you can see there. Uh, and this is its own section. Now, there's also a new custom email domain preference panel found within the iCloud mail. And that basically allows anyone with an iCloud Plus subscription the ability to add their own custom email domain. And I've already published a video how to on how to do this, but I'm going to be creating a new one that's updated for all the new changes that Apple has implemented with this setup process. But you can add an existing email address, or if you don't currently own an email address, you can go that route as well. And what this will do is push you out to the iCloud.com website to finish setting up the domain. Now on iCloud.com, there you can go and customize your MX records and all the necessary details to get your custom domain working. The Notes and Reminders app get live text integration. So if you go in and choose scan text within Reminders, for instance, you can now scan text directly in there just like that with live text. Just tap insert and there you go. Same thing applies to the Notes app. Tap the camera, tap scan text put some text in front, whether it be a billboard or a piece of paper or whatever else, and then insert just like that. Now the magnifier app gets some updates as well. So you can see the camera selectors look quite a bit different in 15.3.1. Over here, you get a pop-up selection. So you can choose between your auto, your close-up, uh, your front-facing camera. And for the pro devices, that Wide angle camera is very nice for getting close up macro shots. An Apple Music playlist will now display the name of the playlist when you scroll down in the top bar, just like that, classical sleep. And the music app gets new quick action shortcuts for play most recent and play my station. And Apple Music now has a share play shortcut, so you can share play a song directly from the now playing interface. And there's tighter share play integration overall. So here's Apollo. If I tap share, open up the share sheet, you see a share play button. Now what's new in Apple podcast, you get a brand new splash screen explaining what's new, but let's talk about it. So now you can filter podcasts that you subscribe to by unplayed, downloaded, or you can choose all episodes and you can also browse podcasts by seasons. So just tap the seasons button. And now I can drill down to a particular season that I want to listen to. In the schedule summary in 15.4 now has a weekly notification average instead of a daily notification average right here under apps and summary. And you can configure app store notifications in 15.4. Just tap your user avatar and then you can tap notifications. Now you can choose between new features and updates and recommendations and offers. And in the shortcuts app, you'll notice updated system icons for things like URL encode or OpenX callback URL. You see those different icons there. You also get an updated top stories layout in the stocks app, complete with the byline and even an ellipsis to tap on for additional options. So if you want to, for instance, share a story directly or save to Apple news, you can do that. And here's a side by side look 15.3.1 on the left and 15.4 on the right. You also get an updated AirPod status and it's very subtle with the updates, but you can t definitely tell the difference here uh, with the charging indicator fonts and even the orientation of the AirPods themselves. There's also a new AirPods Pro accessibility glyph for AirPods in accessibility settings and an updated AirPlay icon for Roku streaming devices. You can see the streaming stick 4K right here. In visual lookup rolls out to more countries, a handy feature that lets you look up details around your environment using Siri knowledge. Is it available in your neck of the woods? Let me know down below. So that was a hands-on look at what's new in iPad OS 15.4 and iOS 15.4. What's your favorite new change or feature? Let me know down below and be sure to check out these other videos where we go in depth with universal control, face ID unlock with the mask and more. This is Jeff with 9 to 5 Mac.